Alright, welcome back. Today we're going to do the second part of our third person controller and this is going to be the camera tracking. We already did the first part, if you remember correctly, and that was the physics controller and the position based controller. Now what we're going to do is the camera controller. So I've already written the class and if you don't remember how to do it, just right click on your solutions, press add class and then write your class name. I chose camera controller. so might as well just copy me and just copy and paste this you can pause the video for however long you like and just copy and paste this and once you do that we're gonna go and build we build our um, project and then once you do that you get your property which is a camera controller then we go to the object that we want to move so in our case it's still the physics controller or whatever object you want to control it on and we're gonna add a new property and then we just click and drag the camera controller I have a few things over here that I already have so the look at object would literally be just the object itself so I'm just gonna click and drag that object right in here and that's gonna be our main character I think it'll be easier if I just said main character here so now we're looking at the main character just click and drag it in here and I have a few numbers here. You can copy and paste them. I think it will be easier. So once we're done here, let's actually start coding this stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to first initialize our main camera. So get to actually control it. So we're going to do main camera and we're going to do uh, Unigen gain. So uh, when we were using the camera before, we were using the player spectator camera and we had it as a main player on. And we also removed this controller so any button we press won't be affected by it. So what the main player on means is now it's the game's main uh, camera. So we're gonna go into the game and we're gonna say get player and now we're gonna get whatever main camera it is and that initializes the pointer. So we're not going to use too much stuff. The next thing I did was just to uh, make it a little easier for you guys to know how to do uh, booleans. So true and false is this guy. So we're going to do a little if statement. And if this thing is inverted, it will be this, else it's going to be this. Now, we can leave this as it is, but it's not going to work. Because now what it's asking for is if this value is null or not. So it's already null. I mean, it's already not null, making it false. So it's always going to give us true. But once we write dog get, it's going to give us the value, which is either true or false. So when, once we get this value, let's just choose our boy right here, and we just give it a value. So if it is not, if it's inverted is true, then it's going to be equal to y, else invert y equals to minus one i'm probably sure it should be the opposite but whatever all right so the next thing we need is actually the mouse position where it is on the camera any movement we do with the mouse left right up down it's going to be recorded and then move the camera itself so what we're going to do is we're going to use the mouse position that i have written over here as an integer vector 2 and i'm gonna write it to take the games I'm sorry to take the inputs of our mouse and we're gonna take the we're gonna take the rate of change rather than the actual position because once we take the position the mouse automatically resets itself to center so we're never gonna be moving correctly but if we take the rate of change it's gonna move based on how much we moved left right up and down so we're gonna do mouse coordination delta delta which is the rate of change so there we have the mouse position now we have the x and the y so we're actually gonna now use angles if you remember from your old math class when you have an object right here and you have another object here and then you move it at a certain angle it's gonna move in a circular angle but when you have an angle object like this you can also express it in a triangle of a right angle and this now imagine we're looking at this from top-down view meaning 
this is our x and this is our y. So how are we going to even express this? So we have this line called, let's just call it line or make it easier, call it L. So to express this part or the x vector, I mean the y vector, sorry. So to express the y vector, so L y, we do our SOHCAHTOA or the angle cosine and sine. So this one's going to be our L and then since it's opposite, we're going to do, um, let's see, opposite over adjacency, which is sine theta. And then if we do the other one, Lx equals to L cosine of the angle. So whatever angle we have, we multiply it by its cosine and it's going to give us that line and that one's going to give that line. If it's not going to work, that means I butchered this and it's supposed to be reversed, but we'll find out soon. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our position. So angle I'm going to do is our left and right. So I'm going to do plus equals to, meaning angle equals to angle plus. It's going to be the number itself, plus our mouse position dot x. I'm going to do x first. All right. Times, because x is our left and right. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us a really big number. And it's not going to be consistent, especially within frames. And it's just going to go really fast. So what we're going to do is we're going to reset it. And we're going to do the Unigen game get IFPS so it resets it and that resets the object but now we're gonna actually add our rotation speed horizontal so let me just take this horizontal dot get and that gives us the speed at which it moves this object so next and that gives us our angle so left and right Next, let's do the height. I can't spell. Now for height, it's a little bit different because we're gonna have to move it at a specific amount and we're gonna have to stitch it at that amount. So let's say if we got a number of 16, I don't want the height to go all the way to 16. I want it to, once it reaches above our maximum height, it's gonna stay there and it's not going to go beyond. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Unigen math and we're going to use clamp. What clamp does is it, if we just look inside it, it takes a number and it takes its minimum number and maximum number and it keeps it in there. So that's what we're going to do. And this one's going to be a little long, so I'm just going to actually, this one will be a little long, so just bear with me here. So first we're going to take the number itself. We're going to do height and then we're going to do plus equals to, and then we're going to take our invert Y, which we initialize whether we're going to invert the movement or not. All right. Then we're going to uh, times it by the mouse position times Y because we're moving up and down. And then we're gonna reset it. So we're just gonna copy and paste this. All right. And then we're gonna times it by the rotation speed vertical. And then just remember to get the dot get. All right, once we do that, that's gonna be our first part. Next we're going to have to add our minimum and we're going to have to add our maximum. This one's going to be a little easier. So first we, if you notice, I used a vector two, meaning it holds two values. So I'm going to do, um, take this guy and I'm going to do get, and then we just press dot and X and it gives us the X value of this, um, variable. And then for the next one, I'm just going to copy paste this again. And then instead of X, it's going to be Y. So in my case over here, 
when we click on the main character, I said minimum value is minus, I mean 0.5, maximum value is 4. So now it's going to clamp between those two numbers. If you're not used to this, you could always use more floats and just dot get that float. Now we finished with the height and we finished with the angle. What's next is now we actually have to find a new position for our, uh, what's it called? A new point. A new point basically means where I want the camera to be sitting at. So we're just going to do an endpoint dot x. We're not going to use new because that's just going to ruin our memory. What we're going to do is we're going to just initialize it from null to this. I'm just going to do this. And then for x, we're going to do the angle times the radius. So we have the radius here. I'm just going to do radius dot get times because the radius is our L. If we look back here, L. And I said for the x, I said cosine. So let's just do that. Unigen math and then cosine and it's going to ask for cosine what we're going to do cosine the angle itself all right i'm just gonna do the same but for the y And now for the Z, we're going to do height, but we're also going to add a little offset. Now, the reason why we add the offset is just so it doesn't start from the floor. That's the only reason. So we can add like a five half float, and that just makes it so it doesn't actually start from like the floor itself. It doesn't clip into the floor. And we're done kind of because now it's only rotating on the origin what we're going to do now is we're going to displace it by where the object itself is the object that we're looking at so now we're going to do an endpoint which is the point itself plus equals which basically means equals to endpoint plus this displacement and the displacement we're going to be is this object's displacement now this object's a node so what we're going to have to do is press get all right and then we're going to go inside it because it has a method and we're going to get the world position and that makes it um, rotate and displace itself properly along this as the origin now the last app the last two things we're going to do is we're going to set our camera to these positions so main camera all right and then what we're going to do um, an arrow always bad at writing these things we're gonna do a set world position so we're gonna first set the world's position so we're gonna set this camera's position and we're gonna set it to endpoint all right and then we're gonna do a main camera I can never do this correct camera and then the arrows again and then we're gonna do a world look at the world look at means looking at this object so we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna do and it's gonna ask for the node itself or it's gonna ask for the target oh it's a vector 3 so we're gonna just take the same object that we're looking at and get its world position so I already wrote it here I'm just gonna copy and paste it here and that's gonna give me the object I hope I did this correctly if I didn't, then we're going to reverse it. So moving it left, right, up, down. Nope, it's perfect. Now let's move the guy because I don't know my front. Okay, it's moving correctly. Up is down, down is up, left, right, and voila. We got ourselves a controller that's 3D. I mean, third. Um, What's it called? Yeah, that one. So we got our controller and we coded it, and that's our basics third person character controller. 
All right, I think I talked enough, and I'm hoping you guys understood this stuff. But if not, you could always copy paste and then make your own settings. Your next um, homework could be instead of me writing is inverted y, maybe make another one, call it x, and add it into this um, equation. Now, since I already added y, you should know where to add x. And yeah, that's about it. Well, thank you for watching, and next episode, I'm definitely definitely going to start with either displacements or I'm going to start with animations. So stay tuned. We're going to have that next time. And good night. <laughs>